Hi everyone and welcome to this new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Garmin and this is my Knitting and Crochet Podcast. In this episode, so I'm trying to keep it a little bit on the short side so it, it might not seem like a full podcast episode. Um, but in one of my Vlogmas videos, I was going through all of my works in progress. And today I want to give you a works in progress report. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so dry. Um, yeah. So I have my works in progress all here. Um, I had 25 and I actually, I might have not counted a few because uh, I also still have some squares from when I was teaching my Fair Isle workshop so that I haven't finished yet, so I might actually have had 26 works in progress. And during my last video, I was wondering how many whips, how many works in progress I could finish within 24 hours. Uh, it wasn't that many, it was two. Um, it was uh, a chunky monkey hat, and put that over there, and some afterthought cable socks, which I have gifted uh, a couple days ago at Christmas. And then uh, close to the end of the video, I was working on my reindeer, which I have finished now, the sleeping reindeer. The, for the original version, I had put a ribbon around, like around the neck or around the body. Uh, I might still do that, but I'm considering this as finished. So that is one more whip off my list. The Sleeping Reindeer is a design by me. It's featured in Yarn Bookazine issue 6, the folk issue, but you can also purchase it on Ravelry as a separate uh, pattern from Escapius. So if you uh, search for Sleeping Reindeer on Ravelry, then you will also find it. Um, but yeah, uh, I think the separate pattern uh, costs like 50% of the entire bookazine so you might just as well get the bookazine and get you know 12 more patterns thrown in there because it's a really really fun uh bookazine and i also have a sock pattern in there um but yes the reindeer so i was able to cross that off my list and because i was um you know with making the arms and making the antlers and stuff i was kind of getting into amigurumi mode <laughs> so I went on to this work in progress of mine that is now also finished, the Satsuki doll. And I've given her some other hair than is actually used in the pattern, so it's not as pretty as the pattern, but I thought it, um, yeah, <laughs> I liked it. Uh, so let me just quickly show you the book where this pattern comes from. So, Ami Lishley Dolls is a book by my friend Alexa, who is Ami Lishley on Instagram. And um, these dolls are, are inspired by Japanese fashion styles. And, uh, <laughs> and because it's inspired by Japan, she has... Uh, the, the front cover is on the right side of the book. So what we usually see as the back side and the the cover on the other side is the back cover but when you actually open the book it it does go from from left to right so it's just a little joke um and she has lots of beautiful dolls in there and i made satsuki and let me show you what, oh, let me actually show you some of the other dolls as well. That is Magical Girl Aya. And then we have Kosuke. And oh, this is such a pretty one. Uh, she's a Lolita girl, Miyako. And this one, what's her name? Yumi. And yes, here, here is Satsuki. So 
So you can see I've made her outfit, but I haven't made her her duster um, jacket yet, and the hair is way different. <laughs> um, uh, it's just so cute. Look at this one. And um, this is available in English now as well. I obviously have the Dutch version. But um, so Ami Leshley Dolls, it's available via her own website, which I think I remember correctly is amileshley.nl. Um, and on there you can get the Dutch version or the English version. So go and support my friend. Um, so yes, I, I was at her book launch party when she launched that book a couple years ago and um, I had started this doll and then you know didn't <laughs> didn't finish it until now and um, the only thing I really um, adapted aside from the hair um, was that I elongated her pants her trousers a little bit at the back because uh, it was gaping open a little bit um, so I think the original trousers are fine if you only have the, the doll stand but if you have them sit then you want some more fabric here um, and the hair I've used some of my hand spun camel <laughs> fiber uh, which I then un I untwisted the plies, um, kind of looks like dreadlocks, which was not my intention, but um, I think it looks fluffy and cute. And I braided some of the strands here and I gave her some bangs, so I think it's very cute. And what I actually want to do is to knit her a sweater <laughs> that is similar to one of my own sweaters. So I think that would be very, very cute. And yes, so this is my Satsuki from Amilishly Dolls. So I was able to cross her of my list as well. Um, right, and now um, let me just pour the milk into my tea. Um, I have been working on a colorwork cardigan for a long time. And I finally finished the knitting part. It is a full colorwork cardigan. And you might think, it's not a cardigan it will be <laughs> I need to cut it open along the stake stitches yep <laughs> so I need to cut it open here and then and then knit the button bands so yes I have already blocked it um, it still looks a bit crinkly, but uh, it's it's honestly already way less crinkly than before. Um, so I think if I actually start wearing it, that that will um, that that will go away. Yes, I I had I had finished one sleeve. In spring of this year I, I think I started it uh, autumn of last year or something um, so and by the time I put it down at the beginning of this year I had the body and one sleeve finished so yes classic um, sleeve island and the second sleeve took me uh, well I picked it up again in um, October or November or so worked on and off um, and finished it um, yeah and then uh, while I was finishing the sleeve I found out that at the first sleeve I had not decreased as much as I was doing on the second sleeve which uh, and on, on the second sleeve I felt like I was doing it correctly because um, the 
the color work patterns there are um, multiples of, of 6 and 12 so I had also decreased in multiples of 6 and 12 whereas here I had just you know decreased whatever whenever so uh, the pattern wasn't matching up um, all the time so then I um, ripped this out and redid that um, and I'm very proud of myself that I did that because sleeves are not my friend so now I get to put it through the sewing machine so I have I want to do one layer of sewing on each side of the uh, steak stitches and then I will cut and yes I will film that because I am yeah I, I want to <laughs> record um, my courage <laughs> I want to to show that I'm doing that so yeah and I'm really really um, pleased with the colors uh, the yarn that I'm using is Ba Ram Yu um, that's the brand and then the yarn range that I'm using is Titus and I know that that brand or that the range is discontinued because they weren't able to get some of the contents it's 100% British um fiber and it was wensleydale and alpaca i think there might even be some blue face luster in there but 100 percent british um and i got it in three colors i don't really remember the colors but you know they have been discontinued so it's really rare that you would be able to get hold of it still um so i have this mint green this kind of like dark caramel and then this really soft lavendery pink purple um, and I thought that was really nice and I will be doing the edging in the lavender as well um, so yes uh, those are my works in, work in progress report <laughs> So I have crossed off the reindeer, I've crossed off the Satsuki doll, and I have not yet crossed off my Saga cardigan. Yeah, actually, uh, let me tell you about the pattern because I didn't tell you yet. This is called the Saga cardigan. There might be some dots on one of the A's, I'm not sure, uh, by Jarabo Gan Design. <laughs> Definitely not pronouncing that correctly, but it's... J A R B O and there are definitely dots on some of the vowels um, but I bet you can find it on Ravelry yes Saga pattern by Wench Roald and it's made for a bigger gauge here and So it's made for a bigger gauge um, and a, a thicker yarn um, and I did note in the in the project pages what I did so let me see if I can actually find that oh I started it December no September 19th 2021 so yes autumn last year yes so to get my size, which would be size M according to the pattern, uh, but I'm knitting size 2XL because I'm working on 3mm needles instead of, I don't know, 4 or 5mm. Um, so, yes. And because it is partly alpaca, um, I'm kind of uh, thinking that it will still stretch a lot because those is, that is one of the properties of alpaca fiber um, so I've knit the sleeves quite quite tight um, so I'm hoping it will loosen up a little bit uh, because it is a cardigan so it needs to fit over something um, which I don't necessarily 
think about all that often while knitting the cardigan. But yes, so this will be featured in my Oh my god, I'm studio, <laughs> uh, which might not be named that way. Um, yes, and I am working on a secret project right now, but I hope to be back soon with a new progress report on my whips. Do let me know if you enjoy this. Um, oh, let's actually see. So I am four whips down, so I am at 21 rip whips right now, and when I steek this, I will be at 20. So that is quite nice. I have not casted on any new things. Have I promised any new things to family members of Christmas? Yes, but I've not cast on anything new right now. So, <laughs> um, yes, that is it for this episode uh, of the New Leaf Podcast. Do let me know if you enjoyed it. Do let me know if you like the episodes being a little bit shorter or that you like to sit here for a longer time. Um, yes, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!